Welcome back, everyone. It's uh, Mr. 4K Upscaler. It's been a while since I uh, made a video, and I think now is the time. Uh, it's March 21st, 2024, year of our Lord. Tomorrow's March 22nd, the release of the Rise of the Ronin, um, developed by uh, Team Ninja. And, uh, of course, it's published by uh, PlayStation uh, Exclusive Studios. And it's a PlayStation 5 exclusive. So the reviews are out. And uh, it's it's a mixed bag. Uh, and that's where I'm always careful uh, when it comes to listening to other people's opinions. Because I like to try the game myself. You know, just because certain person didn't like the outdated graphics or didn't like certain things they were being borrowed from different games like Assassin's Creed, right? Uh, doesn't mean that you're not going to like the game. However, uh, here's the issue. If it was just one person giving those same opinions and, and, and just saying, okay, this is why I don't like it because of this, this, and that. Uh, but a lot of people are giving the same input. They were like, the game looks too outdated. Um... What it's trying to do, it's already been done in Assassin's Creed, and it's done far better in the Assassin's Creed. I then you got uh, Sucker Punch, Ghost of Tsushima, which has done it super <laughs> immersively great. I mean, good luck trying to compete with that. The only thing that can compete against Ghost of Tsushima is the Ghost of Tsushima 2, whenever that comes out. Uh, so, you know, I'm a little bit worried. Uh, and I'm in a predicament because Rise of the Ronin, it's something I was really looking forward to. But the issue is the mixed reviews like these really kind of keep me wondering. Like this one right here. This is from uh, Push Square. And Push Square, it's all about Sony. You know, they love Sony. Uh, and then it got 6 out of 10. And... Uh, and this is what the conclusion is. I mean, it's not a bad game. And, and they're not saying, well, don't buy this, don't play this. It's a horrible game. Stay away from this. What they're simply saying is, uh, coming from an exclusive PlayStation uh, 5, we expected more. And we definitely, certainly expected more from Team Ninja, considering how long they spent working on this game. We definitely expected far more. And that's what the Push Square and others are saying. So basically, they're saying Rise of the Ronin isn't a bad game. It's something debatably worse, completely forgettable, with dated open world design and uh, monotonous narrative, cracking combat of Team Ninja's titles. So dated open world design, uninteresting story, bad visuals, fluctuating frame rate. All of this can really uh, make you... Uh, become uninterested in the game, especially since the game is priced at $70. That's another thing. If this was like uh, $40 or $50, okay, maybe people could, okay, I'll, I'll swallow it, you know, fine. Um, or if this was part of a, you know, a PlayStation Plus membership, yeah, a lot of people would, uh, would have jumped on this uh, easily. But here's another problem. You have Dragon's Dogma 2. I mean, everything about... Um, Rise of the Ronin is just uh, bad decisions were being made here, in my opinion. First of all, why are you releasing this game at the same time, at the same time, when a big behemoth, Dragon Dogma 2, it's coming out? You know people are going to say, man, I'm going to jump on Dragon's Dogma, create my own character, right? You know I'm going to create a, a John Wick's character. Yeah, and that's what I'm going to use. A John Wick's character. But people are going to play Dragon's Dogma too. They're not going to really jump into this game, especially now since they're hearing these mixed reviews and it's not all that. So people are going to be like turned off on it. They're going to say, well, I'm going to spend more money on now on uh, like a deluxe edition of Dragon's Dogma 2, get some extra goodies and start my journey with my character, right? And some people who have money, they're going to buy both. You know, there's, there's some high rollers out there and they don't care. They'll drop $120 in two games or whatever. Uh, so, or more. I think it's 140 depending where you are. But what I'm simply trying to say is, uh, 
why release this game on the same date as Bohemian Dragon's Dogma 2? I mean, fine. Fine. Huh? It's too late now. Same thing goes for Alone in the Dark. Why didn't you release the game in January? When there was like, you know, or February. But no, they released it right on the same week of, of uh, <laughs> these two, uh, these two uh, anticipated uh, games. Even though one of them is Behemoth, which is Dragon's Dogma 2. It's just crushing it with reviews, man. 9 out of 10, 9 out of 10, 9 out of 10. You know, Dragon's Dogma 2 is going to be a top seller, dude. Although, it does have its performance issues on the PC. That's to, to be expected, sure. But that'll be patched up. That'll be fixed with NVIDIA's drivers and AMD drivers, etc., etc. All right, so the reviews are like, okay, 6 out of 10. When you go to the uh, IGN, IGN gave it 7. But even Aijin says, Rise of the Ronin marries a cool settings, Team Ninja's mastery of tough but fair combat and smart RPG design, even when map clutters and junk loot can get in the way. Um, to be fair, this is what he says, Rise of the Ronin, um, unfortunately, it's also a game full of map clutter, bloated system, and truly absurd amount of junk loot. And the time I spent clearing out everything didn't spark joy dealing with all of these non-essential systems made me pine for a leaner, meaner, more focused game. Rise of the Ronin, it's a excellent when it has the courage to be itself and lean into uh, its challenging, rewarding fighting. Too often, however, it feels stuck in indecisions torn between what it wants to be and what it feels ex it's expected to be. And not even the best samurai can overcome that. And and, and that, that's the I think the issue. The issue is it's trying to be like a ghost of Tsushima in a different time period um, of the Japan. And um, and it wants to achieve that to be loyal to that timeline, right? Of that time period in Japan. But at the same time it's trying to borrow from Assassin's Creed and Ghost of Tsushima. And here's the problem with that, I think. When you're trying to borrow from somebody who's already been a master of looting and open world like Assassin's Creed um, and Ghost of Tsushima combat, which is fantastic and beautiful open world, right? How do you, like, you know, that's, that's hard to do. Especially when you got outdated graphics uh, that looks like something from PlayStation 4, uh, you know, back in 2015, <clears throat> right? Uh, or maybe 2014 looks very outdated. The world looks very outdated. It doesn't look like a colorful, uh, vibrant, you know, like a ghost of Tsushima. It's such a vibrant world. Like you want to go to that hill. You want to go there. Take a photo of this. Take a photo of that sunset, right? Um, and it doesn't feel like that. A lot of people are saying the same thing, you know. And then you got, you know, uh, Rise of the Ronin review from Game Informer. Game Informer feels the same way. They gave it a 7, you know. And um, they're all pretty much saying the same thing. I'm not going to read this. You guys can go read all of these articles. Uh, but they're all pretty much saying the same thing. What they're basically saying, it's not a bad game. It's not a bad game. But the issue is, the problem is... Um, what we just talked about. The issue is it's trying to be Assassin's Creed in a samurai world, but it's not really delivering on that to its full potential. It's trying to be a ghost of Tsushima, but it's not delivering on the combat system either. Um, it's trying to be many different things, but it's not really accomplishing its task. It's kind of like... It's so badly, desperately wants to be all of those things to borrow from Assassin's Creed and Ghost of Tsushima and other games, but it just fails in that, in that area. It doesn't execute it, like it doesn't have its own original. Okay, from what I'm look, I didn't play the game. All right, so let's just, all right, I didn't play the game. Clearly, I'm just reading reviews, but what I'm getting at from all these mixed reviews is that. <clears throat> The game 
it's not it's not being original. It's trying to borrow from it's trying to borrow from other games and it's not really being its own original game. I think that's that's the issue here. Uh, sometimes you, you got to stop borrowing from other games. Sometimes you have to be original. And I think this is also another learning lesson for developers. Stop borrowing from others. Uh, they have that recipe and they know how to do it well. Uh, you create your own original recipe. You know, this is what developers need to understand. Stop copying other works. All right? They got that. They license that. They're really good at that game. Let them do that game. You try to find something original. You try to create something original that defines Rise of the Ronin. Now I got to speak in Keon Reeves' voice. You need to find something more original. And I think that's where Rise of the Ronin has failed on that hope of being original. Um, and it's true. And, and it really did. I mean, looking at the reviews, it really did fail on that aspect. Now, if it was just a one person saying this, I wouldn't take it in consideration. But everybody, it's saying the same thing. They can be all wrong, dude. They can be all part of some kind of a cult group to, to just hate on the game or but they're not hating they're just saying they're a little bit disappointed that this game could have been its own originality it could have been its own uh, signature and and it didn't and it's because it's focusing so much on what other developers did and ghost of tsushima and assassin's creed very successfully and they're like mm, let's borrow from them I have no problem if you borrow some ideas from other developers, but when you s try to copy it to the full alphabet, then it, it becomes a problem because you're not trying to be original. <laughs> so, um, okay, I don't want to really butcher this video any more than it needs to be. First of all, I didn't play the game. And I want to say something before I leave. I learned my lesson back in... Uh, was it 2022 when Callisto Protocol, uh, not Callisto, is it? Yeah, Callisto Protocol came out. And I was so hyped about Callisto Protocol. I was super pumped and hyped because uh, uh, a, a grandfather of Dead Space who created the Dead Space, uh, it's working on this game that's also set in space. I was like, dude, this is going to be awesome with photorealistic graphics and all that. So I was super pumped and I pre-ordered $90. Yeah, take my money, right? And then once the game was released, uh, I find out, oh, it's some mediocre crap. You know, da, 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 da. this is not what I was looking for. I'm never going to touch this game again once I finished it in, in a short period of time, seven hours. You can finish the game like in six hours if you just speed through it. <clears throat> and um, I learned my lesson the hard way um, from Callisto Protocol. And I keep telling everybody, guys... I don't get excited for no game anymore. I'm not getting excited for uh, Indiana Jones. I'm not getting excited for Hellblade 2. I'm not getting excited for nothing except Grand Theft Auto 6, which, of course, it's Grand Theft Auto, man. That's like the only game I get excited for is Grand Theft Auto 6. But everything else is like I'm very careful, man. I'm, even Silent Hill 2 Remake, even Metal Gear Solid 2, um, Metal Gear so Solid 3 Delta, Metal Gear Solid 3 Delta, I'm kind of skeptical because I don't know. We'll see what they have shaved, what they have kept. Did they shave certain things so they don't piss off certain people? Uh, so I don't know. We'll see. So what I'm trying to say is uh, I'm very skeptical these days. I always tell people, give me a demo. Give me a demo. Give me a demo. If you think you got something substantially great, if you think you have something awesome on your hands, well, give me a demo. Give us a demo. Let me try it. Because if you failed to give me a demo, that means you're hiding something. That means you don't have something great on your hands. That means that you're worried about the bad press uh, and the, the bad press will you know, not 
make the game sell as quick as possible, especially since you put the release date of The Rise of the Ronin on the same date as a behemoth from Capcom called Dragon's Dogma 2. And who do you think people are going to be playing the most? Dragon's Dogma 2. Now, especially when they see mixed reviews of Rise of the Ronin, they say, man, I'm going to go with a Dragon's Dogma 2. I'm going to create my own character and have fun. Uh, so, Team Ninja, man, you know, you did this to yourself. <laughs> uh, you should have waited. I mean, I don't know. Look, um, am I going to play this game... Look, Dragon's Dogma 2, it's, it's out tomorrow. I can't lay $70 on this when I can get Dragon's Dogma 2 for less on a CD keys and, and, and just have fun with Dragon's Dogma as a Keon Reeves character. Run around as Keon Reeves. Yeah, that's right. Running around like the Ronin in a Dragon's Dogma's world. All right, so... Um, so why should I waste my time? This, I'm going to wait till it goes on sale. Or if I can get a, like a dirt cheap um, code on it and get it for like, uh, I don't know, like 40, 50 bucks. I don't know, man. But right now I'm like, I'm really like, mm. I'm not saying I'm not going to play the game, but I'm simply saying that I have Dragon's Dogma too, man. I have that behemoth tomorrow. This is something I can put in the back seat and wait, wait a while, wait a while. And then uh, when there's nothing going on, maybe I can, when there's no games, I can maybe jump in on it and like, oh, let's check this out. You know, let, let's give this a try. But right now, man, I can, you know, lay out 70 bucks, especially when there's no demo. There's not even a demo, dude. I, like, I mean, I can't, especially what I'm hearing from a lot of people. I can't just like lay out 70 bucks, considering there's Dragon's Dogma 2 coming out tomorrow, man. I'm sorry, Team Ninja, man. I mean, it's just disappointing a little bit. Um, and uh, lesson learned, guys. And I, you know, I'm gonna end this video right now. I'm sorry, it's 17 minutes. Lesson learned here is demo. Give me a demo. If you can't give me a demo, then you're hiding something. I said this time and time and time and time again. All right, well, sorry for 17 minutes, guys, but I just had to get off this, uh, my chest, get this off my chest and, and just uh, tell you how I feel, man. There's no filter here. There's no sponsors here. I'm just telling you how I feel. Um, yes, I did not play the game, granted, but looking at the re uh, mixed reviews and everybody's saying the same thing. They can't all be lying. That's a fact. They can't be all lying. This is coming from Sony fanboys too. They can't be all lying. They're saying the same thing. Everybody's saying the same thing. And that worries me. That's like, ooh, that's a big red flag. <sighs> now, give me a demo, Team Ninja, and then let me try it. Or send me a copy of the game, Team Ninja, and who knows? <laughs> I might change my mind. But right now, I'm hearing the same thing from everybody. It's saying the same thing. They're not saying it's a bad game. They're simply saying a missed opportunity. It could have been something original, but it's not because it's borrowing from all these other games. They're far better than what we are trying to implement here. And it failed on its originality. That's basically what they're saying. The game, it's failing to be original. And I'll leave it at that. But it doesn't mean I'm not going to play it. I will play it when I have a chance. But right now, my main focus is the behemoth dragon's dogma 2 as a keanu reeves character yeah all right guys love you all be good take care